over 50 million sites, 800 million pages, and 100 million travelers every day. It's the world of the World Wide Web, the Internet Century. Welcome to the Information Age. The age of access and knowledge. We need knowledge to live, but wisdom to live effectively. India talks about Gandhi as the father of their new nation. South Africa talks about Mandela as the father of their nation. Today, we are honored to have in our presence tonight the father of the Bahamas. This man ruled as a servant in this country for 25 years as prime minister of the nation. He took our country through childhood, adolescence. He has brought our country to a young adult. He took us through the social revolution. It was his government that opened the door for me to get an education. He was one of the first leaders in the country to support this organization. He has attended more than 11 of these leadership conferences over the past years. He was prime minister. He has supported me personally. I've had the privilege of praying with him and his family in their home. He is a statesman. He was knighted by the Queen of England, both he and his wife. And they are forever etched in the history of our country as a father of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. He deserves every accolade that this nation can think of because the price of the first builder is always the heaviest price. When I think of introducing him, I think of introducing not just a man, but two things, a history and an institution. When people like this die, you lose history forever. I hope he lives much longer. It is my deep honor and privilege on the last occasion of this leadership conference for this millennium and this century to have as our official guest for this conference the father of the Bahamas, the first lady of the Bahamas, the man who all Bahamians have cherished and will continue to cherish as the leader that brought us where we are. Please welcome the Honorable Sir Lyndon Oscar Pinlin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. and Mrs. Monroe, please, thank you very much. Thank you. Your Majesty, I am a child of the African diaspora. Young Minister Lang and I are proud to be children of the African diaspora. Some of us were left in Maryland, in the north. Some of us were left in Brazil, in the south. Others of us were scattered in the islands of the Caribbean. It doesn't matter now. We are proud children of the African diaspora. I thank you 
for coming these thousands of miles to be with us this week. For years, we had heard about the Lomé Convention and how that convention sought to bring African, Caribbean, and the Pacific countries together with their former colonial metropolitan powers to improve relations of trade between us. Few of us realized that Lomé is the capital of Togo. Now, Togo is in the Bahamas. Lomé is in the Bahamas. And over the years, we have come full cycle. Honorable Minister, I thank you so much too, sir, for being here this evening and for your very inspiring words. I thank all the ministers of religion who have come from far and near to be present at this August leadership meeting this week. Members of parliament, senators, members of the house, and uh, leading political figures from around the globe. I thank you all for coming. I don't speak on behalf of the, of the government. I don't speak on behalf of the opposition. I speak on behalf of ordinary little fellows who are of the African diaspora. <laughs> We do not have to forgive anything or anybody. Man's inhumanity to man didn't start in Nigeria or Benin or Togo or Ghana or Liberia or Sierra Leone or the Gambia. It didn't start there. And it wasn't a one-man band. The Africans didn't start it by themselves. The Portuguese didn't start it by themselves. So we have to put all those things behind us just like we put Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan, and we put those things behind us like we put Satan. One thing I know is this. There was a song, I can't remember how many years ago. It was very popular, it said, what the world needs now is love. Love, love, love. That was true then. It is true now with less than 60 days to go before the end of the century. And it will be true for the next 100 years. The minister says, into the new me, me, millennium. What we missed was love. It was the absence of love that forced the African diaspora on us. And whether the conflict is Catholic against Protestant in Northern Ireland, or Tutsi against Hutu in Rwanda. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, hey. What it signifies is the absence of love. If the Serbs do it to the Kosovos, they call it ethnic cleansing. When the Somalis do it to their brothers in Africa, they call it tribal warfare. These linguistic nuances send separators. It only means that white people call what they do one thing and black people call and they call what black people do something else. But it's the same thing.
They're chopping up one another, shooting up one another, killing up one another. And it isn't confined to Kosovo. A young boy named Lyndon Brown got shot in his head over the hill last week. And if you think that wasn't caused by the absence of love, you tell me what it is. So if we are in search of love, we have to go back to search to find the source of love. And where can we possibly find the source of love? Is it biological? Is it psychological? Is it physical? Is it spiritual? Any number of people may have different answers. I am inclined to believe your majesty, honorable minister, that if we search hard enough and can find, and I believe you will find some answers this week, for the source of love, and if you can perhaps devise some blueprint so if you find the source of love, how that could be sprinkled from place to place, upon heart, upon heart, in head, on tongue, we may be able at last to come to grips with some of the massive human problems that face us. Because all the problems we face, you know, all of them are basic human problems. They are problems in human relations. They are problems in how we see one another, how we treat one another, how we deal with one another, whether we think we are better than him, whether we think he doesn't deserve what he's got. It's a human relations problem. It is a love problem. It is a Jesus Christ problem. And if you say he is the answer, <laughs> Dr. Moreau, that's where you come in. If you say he is the answer, you would need to show this conference this week as you reveal the word, how his love transcends everything and everybody. And you will have to show us all how we can partake of that special kind of love that will transform our human relationships. Us of the Caribbean, this third world thing, is again, that's another form of division. First world, second world, third world, that's just another form of division to separate us. Some better than others. That's all that means. Don't worry about that. The first world needs more love than the second world. And the second world needs just as much love as the third world. As a matter of fact, everybody knows that we in the third world got more love than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and so I should like to thank you, sir, for the honor of having my wife and I at this most impressive opening this evening. Forgive me, I'm sipping 
little medication as I go, my nutritional package. So let this conference go forth from strength to strength. This global leadership summit in search of finding that special leadership quality that has united hundreds of millions of people around the globe and has a single powerful message founded on true love, based fundamentally on man's humanity to man. And when you, I, I, I know you found it already. I, you finished telling me about it, you see, that's how I know you found it. So I know, you, I know exactly what you're going to reveal here this week. And after you will have done so, now you're going to have to have another one for us little ordinary fellas to see how we could bring that into the, into the body politic. You see? Because that's where we fall down. The missing link of the 20th century has been, I think, that we've left this leadership, love, humanity to man business too much to the church. We take it into church on Sabbath, I'm an Adventist, or on Sunday to others. And then on Monday, we forget it. But that we can't, if we won't make that mistake again, the 21st century will be worse than the 20th. We can't do that. Somehow, we've got to find, and don't tell me it's important because, boy, they're finding solution to everything these days. Technology is finding a way to do everything. And so, we'll have to find the way to translate these principles that you will develop and find this week into the body politic. And when all of us can recognize each other's as what? Our brother's keepers. And in that way, we will manifest true love that is inspired by our supreme leader. Thank you so, so much. Now, you, I don't want you to, to, to regret you asked me here tonight. So I don't want to overstay my welcome. Thank you very much. I am honored to be here. And God bless you all. Thank you.